All right, guys, let's take a look over here, all right? This is the Tiger Forex Report by Teddy Kekstadt. This is a great newsletter. Um, I read it every Monday uh, before I publish it. Um, I'm not that well versed in um, the Forex market, but still, the way that Teddy presents the information, it's succinct, it's informative. I really like it. Guys, this is, you know, risk free month subscription. If you don't like it, you're getting your money back. And while you're here, sign up for the Discord as well. That's $1. $1 a year. Teddy, how you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So let me know what's going on. What, what's happening today in the, the Forex or in the, in the broader time frame as well? Well, I'll tell you what, after last night's State of the Union address, I think the whole market is screwed up and doesn't know what to make of it. Um, if, if things go the way they were talking, he was talking last night, uh, we could have a lot of reversals in a lot of markets. Uh, right now, let's say, let's take the State of the Union off the table. Um, I, like, I like that oil right now is holding kind of firm. I think that that's going to uh, bounce. I think the interest rates... Right now, you're looking at the 30-year and 10-year where they, they kind of uh, basically butted up some nice resistance and came off it. I think they're going to keep on leaning lower, um, especially with the unemployment number that we had on Friday. And also, you have uh, the mainstream media now saying that, oh, a recession is going to be completely avoided. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, I guess according to numbers, in theory, we're not in one, even though we have been for six months already. Um, if that is the case, well, that goes against the Fed's narrative. And I think that the interest rate hiking will not only just be for the next couple of meetings, but they're going to keep on hiking all the way into the summertime if that's truly the case. And that's going to help to, to bolster the dollar, I would think, versus most of the uh, currency pairs. Uh, which one would you like to talk about first? Let's look at the dollar. You know, um, I'm interested in the dollar's relationship with gold and how that moves. And we're also seeing some sideways movement right now. Uh, but, you know, in the in the past sessions, we've gotten some interesting movement. So I'd be a little bit interested to hear what your, your take on that on the long term. OK, uh, well, long term, I think that. Uh the dollar, at least uh, if, if I'm right with what the Fed is probably going to do, um, especially because of the recent economic numbers and the way things, because remember the Fed has been talking about for six months that they want a recession. So if we're not going into a, a technical by definition recession, they're going to keep on hammering rates. Now they're not going to be as aggressive as they were last year, but I think that you can count on a quarter point being basically set into every meeting going forward for the next uh, six to eight months unless we start to see an uptick in unemployment and also um, we start to see some other um, things that point towards a true recession by economic de definition. So that, I think, in general will help to keep the dollar strong. Now, there's certain currency currency crosses where I think you're going to have an issue, and that could be possibly especially with the yen, um, mm -hmm. just because that trend has been so strong over the past uh, year and a half, and we have a rollover in the Bank of Japan's uh, leadership coming up in a little over a month. And if once that does occur, if, if it turns out that our Fed um, comes off the hawkishness the way the media and everyone says it's going to happen over the next couple of months, well, that would make the dollar weak versus the yen. Um, if it if the Japanese government, or the BOJ, excuse me, um, becomes more hawkish than what they're right now is expected, that also would bolster the yen versus the dollar. Um, so in that currency cross, I think you can see dollar weakness. Um, but overall, I think you're going to see dollar strength, in, in, uh, especially in currencies versus like the euro and the pound and the Aussie dollar especially as well. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up the yen. Um, I had I read a report with the Japan Times that they had intervened. Uh, twice in October to support the yen. Mm -hmm. How does that kind of intervention uh, affect these kind of, you know, cross rates essentially? And I mean, does it does it help with confidence in trading it? Um, I mean, what's your what's your perspective on that? Uh, well, it, it gives you it does give you a sense of direction, some sort of confidence, especially in, at least in the short run. Now, when you're talking about the, the yen, now that's a big one because, you know, the Japanese, um, you can kind of set your watch by what they do. You know, they're very transparent and they don't just react very quickly. <laughs> and especially sure. when it comes towards what they've doing done currently, like in October and where they're leaning right now. This is a multi-decade change. You know, I mean, they, they've been keeping negative interest rates, zero percent interest rates in Japan for a very, very long time. You know, so now when you think about that in, in, in a long term perspective, that's not very supportive for the currency. 
but it has helped their exports for a very, very long time. Now, I think the one thing that the Japanese will be cautious with is that um, they will not become as aggressive for, per se as like how we were in the, in the, in the U.S. or even how uh, the ECB is acting right now. And the biggest reason is because they're export reliant. Japan has certain imports. They de I mean, they're an island. There's certain things they need. But overall, they're a net exporter. OK, so their their currency valuation is very touchy, you know, and you don't just come off of zero and negative interest rates and just try and explode your interest rates. That 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 makes serves no purpose whatsoever, especially because of their economic positioning, you know. So um, I think you're going to see strength in the end, but I would be very cautious if anyone says that they're going to be very aggressive when it comes to becoming hawkishness when it, it's, it, with that currency. And that's where uh, Tommy and I have been talking about divergence in the currency markets. You know, for COVID and during certain things, it was not that all markets trade in tandem on a daily basis, but the trends were in tandem. And now we're coming to a point where we have a big influx of, of variables where we're, we're breaking that tandemness. So you're going to see the dollar index is going to be a hard gauge for a lot of currencies moving forward. But I would say with the dollar yen, that's what you really need to pay attention to is those, those couple of issues. Right on. And I think the last pair I'm curious about, and again, I was talking about the geopolitical situation over there would be, you know, the dollar euro. I'm curious mm -hmm. what your thought is going forward of the broader European economy itself with the kind of uncertainty that we're seeing sure. um, and kind of what your take is on that. Okay, uh, number one, the ECB will be more aggressive than our Fed. Um, however, they're out of bullets. So where they did their half point raise the last meeting and they should be probably doing another half point in the next meeting, uh, I think that they're going to have to stall because they don't have the ability uh, to keep doing what they're doing. First of all, the, the German economy, not to mention the whole EU, is suffering. you got to remember that we're, we're one year into the Ukrainian conflict, and they said it was going to last two months. The sanctions that they've imposed haven't done anything but literally put a bomb off across the economy of the EU. So I think, you know, just like where Americans are saying, hey, um, you know, we have a debt ceiling. Why does the debt ceiling have to be raised? Why don't we just cut the funding to Ukraine? Why are we participating in this war? The whole EU, they're pretty much at that level, you know. I mean, you have the, mo the highest rate of inflation in Germany since right before would touched off a world war oh, and a whole yeah, political right. regime, you know. And one thing I remember historically is that from that time period on, the German economy and the German people said we will never let high unemployment or high inflation ever, ever happen in our country, no matter what. And it's becoming a very big issue because they're flipping the bill for the EU. So that means they're out of bullets. They can't. They cannot destroy their currency and their economy anymore. So they either have to lift the sanctions, and if they don't lift the sanctions and this conflict continues, the EU and the and the Euro, they're gonna suffer greatly. They're not, right now they looks, it looks very strong because of central bank action. They're not gonna be able to maintain it. And especially if our Fed does not lay off, if, they don't, if the next meeting does not be their, la if that's not their last hike, like the news has been saying it's gonna be, um, guess what, that's gonna hurt the Euro very badly. Interesting perspective. It definitely is in line with some of the increasing rhetoric from that area. Teddy, thank you so much for joining me. It was great You're seeing welcome, you. Jacob. See you next right. week. See you now.